Good morning. I'm coming to you again today from uh, my wife's art studio, and it's a nice quiet place that we can study together. And I'm studying with you today in response to a message that I gave a while back. I believe it was on the 144,000 that I mentioned that Michael and Jesus are one in the same. And I said, it's clear. And I received a comment or two with respect to that. And people had asked, how can that be? And they wanted, you know, apparently wanted some more clarification. So today we'll look at that and we'll have a study about Michael and Jesus. Are they one in the same? So we have to let the Bible speak for itself, as I always say. So we want to start with Daniel chapter 12. And if we start with Daniel chapter 12, uh, we'll get our Bibles ready. But let's have a word of prayer first so that we have uh, the Spirit of God descend upon us that we might understand the word much more clearly and we're not at a disadvantage. So let's pray, pray together. Father in heaven, as we pray together today, we just pray for your guidance and direction and your spirit be with us. Keep us in your care, forgive us of our sins, and bless us now as we look into, for a short time, the study of Michael. And we trust that you open this, the Bible to us and let your spirit breathe upon us so that our understanding is not of our own, but it is of Christ. So thank you so much for being with us and bless us and let every word that I speak be truthful and let my thoughts be nimble, and let my, my tongue be agile, and let me say only those things that honor your name. So thank you so much for being so good to us, and bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're in Daniel chapter 12, and we're looking at the character Michael. And this won't be a long video, but I uh, want to make sure that we get to the, the meat of the word. And the meat starts with Daniel chapter 12, and it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which shall stand for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So this quick verse gives us an understanding that there will be uh, a character, there is a character in the Bible named Michael. And it says that there'll be a time of trouble. And this gives us an indication of the end, the time of the end. It says that that Michael will stand up or take control and stand for the children of thy people. But this verse alone doesn't give us a clear understanding that Michael is indeed Jesus, but we have to build our case. And as we say, we have to let, uh, as Bible detectives, build our case and find, as any detective would, if we find the name of someone, we find their attributes, who they are, where they live, all the details of their life, then we'd probably be on a good track to, de to detect and who that person is. So we're trying to find out who Michael is, and we have a detail now that it says that he would be around at the end of time, and he will stand for his people, and it says there shall be a time of trouble such as never was. Um, so as we look at that, keep that in mind. Keep in mind that our first reference is to Michael found in Daniel chapter 12. But turn with me to give a little more detail and see if Daniel chapter 10 speaks of Michael as well, and it does. Because we have a narrative in Daniel chapter 12 that tells us that Daniel himself was having a deep prayer session for a very long time, and then he was visited by a heavenly being. And it says in verse 12, and it says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words." So this heavenly being comes to visit Daniel and says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So from the first verse, it tells us, no question that we saw in Daniel chapter 12, that Michael shall stand up or take control in the end. But we're backing up a little bit and says that this same Michael that is described in Chan Daniel chapter 12, as described in Chan Daniel chapter 10, it says that he is a prince. But you're going to say, you may say, that is Jesus described anywhere else in the Bible as a prince? Well, let's make that case. And we find that in Isaiah chapter 9, and I believe in verse 6, if I'm not mistaken. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. And we know that this is a prophetic chapter, but let's read it together, and as I'm studying with you, we come together, and it says in Isaiah chapter 9, 
and verse 6. And it says, if we're asking the question, is was Jesus ever called a prince? Because it says here, that says Michael was one of the princes. Let's make that connection. It's not still not have all the details, but we're making a connection. And it says that for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So we made a connection there, but you're going to say, well, Michael could be called a prince, and Jesus could be called a prince. I agree with you. It could be the case. But let's build on this case. Again, we have to be a good detective to find out the details if we can make the connection between the attributes of Michael and the attributes of Jesus, if they are one and the same, and then let the Bible tell the truth and let uh, and you you be the judge as far as what, what we're saying today. So we're looking at Michael and it says in Jude chapter one in verse nine, again, Jude only has one chapter, but it's right before the last book in the Bible, just in that frame work there. Let's look at Jude chapter one and verse nine to see if it talks about Michael as well and gives us any more detail on who this is. And it says in Jude chapter one, verse nine, it says, yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the, with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. So now we're getting some more detail. We saw in Daniel chapter 12 and 10, talking about Michael, it says that he was a prince. It says he was a, a leader from Daniel chapter 12. But now it says that this Michael is the archangel. And I look at this very carefully, and someone had, I believe this was the, 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 the key that was the question. And someone said, ah, you see, that Jesus cannot be Michael because it says that he's an archangel. Well, clearly, there's no question. Jesus is not an angel because angels are created beings. And we know from John 1, and we know throughout the Bible clearly that Jesus is the creator. He's not a created being. No question about that. We believe that Jesus is indeed a member of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, each individually are God. However, God expresses himself in three distinct persons, and Jesus is a member of the Godhead. Jesus is God. He's the creator. But here it says, it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, disputed about the body of Moses. It says that Michael is the archangel. Ah, so we have some really good details now on who this Michael is. So it matches up with Jesus. We have to let the Bible tell us who this Michael is. So let's turn now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, because now it's calling Michael the archangel. And again, I say again that Michael is not an, I'm sorry, that Jesus is not an angel. But it says that he's the head of the angels, just as the president is the head of the military. He's not a soldier, but he's the head or they have the overarching power over the military. So there's no question that Jesus is not an angel, but he has the overarching power of the angels. So again, he's in charge of the angels. So let's look now what 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we'll see if this has any clarity for us. And again, I'm looking up these verses with you. I don't have them just right before me, but I have to look them up with you so we can read them together. So let's see if it says what the archangel, who is Michael, that's no, that's no question about that, about from Jude. So let's see what it says the archangel has the power to do and see if it matches Christ's power. So now 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 15 tells us, For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall, shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then it tells us about this grand resurrection, and it tells us very clearly that this archangel, who Jude says was Michael, can reach into the grave with his voice and raise the dead. So we see very clearly, my friends, that Michael is the archangel that can raise the dead. Now, now we're getting down to the brass tacks, and we can see that in John chapter 5 and verse 25, and we find it, and we'll see what it says. We'll see if the archangel, who is Michael, has the power to reach in the grave and see if it makes the connection that it is Jesus. 
So let's look at John chapter 5 and verse 25. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. That's the same description that First Thessalonians said, the one that will reach into the grave is the archangel, that is Michael. And now John says, the one that will have his voice heard by the dead is the Son of God. No question about it. And we know that the Son of God is Jesus. And it says, And they that hear shall live. My friends, this is painfully clear that Jesus and Michael are one in the same because of the attributes. Again, they have different names, of course, but it says that Michael is the head of the angels. Jesus, no question, is the head of the angels. He's the boss. He's in charge. He's not an angel, but yet he's the head of the angels. It says that he's a prince. No question about it. Isaiah said he's a prince, but the, 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 the knockout punch is that he can reach into the grave with his voice and raise the dead. It says that the Son of God, who is Jesus, can do that. And it says the one who can do that is also described as Michael the archangel. So you can't have two people reaching into the grave, raising the dead. They have to be one and the same. So let's stay in John as we wrap this up. And tells us in John chapter 11, a narrative about some friends of Jesus. And it says that their friend, Jesus' friend Lazarus, was dead. He died. And it says in John chapter 11, starting with verse 21, Lazarus's uh, sister was quite distressed. And it says in verse 21, his sister, Martha, and then said Martha unto the Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. So you can see that Martha is distressed that her brother had died. But She's encouraged. She says, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. And Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Ah, Jesus is giving an indication of what we saw in 1 Thessalonians, that there'll be a resurrection. And Martha makes it clear. It says, Martha said unto him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Last day. And Jesus said unto her, I'm the resurrection. Oh, it makes it clear, my friends. It makes it clear that Jesus is the one that raises the dead back to life. When they are the righteous are raised back to life, it can only be by the voice of Jesus. Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the one that raises the dead. And we make it very clear that from the other verses that we saw, it says that the same attributes are described as Michael, the archangel, who can reach into the grave, and raise the dead. They are one in the same, my friends. There's no question about it. John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. So he's saying that there will be a day of resurrection, but the resurrection is not so much a day. He says, it's me. I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. And he that believes in me, though he were dead, he shall live, yet shall he live. So that's a clear indication, my dear friends, that Jesus is the one that raises the righteous dead. And it says also, when we've looked through Daniel uh, chapter 10, chapter uh, 12, Isaiah chapter 9, Jude chapter 1, and uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, John 5, and now John 11, makes it clear with all that body of evidence that there is one being, and it is God himself, who is Jesus, who is also described as the archangel, the head of the angels, that will reach into the grave and raise the dead on that last day, that will be very clear that his name is Michael. They are one in the same. I want you to be very clear that there's no confusion about this. Again, I want to stress that we believe that Jesus is the creator. He's not an angel, but he is the, the head of the angels. He is in charge of the angels, and he created the angels. So there's no question about it that they are one in the same, Jesus and Michael. So as you study today, I want you to take a look at this if you would. Write your comments. Tell me whether you agree or disagree. Disagree, It's okay. And we can still be friends. But I want you to continue to study and let the Bible speak and enjoy this journey in which we find ourselves in the Bible. So as we study together, each time I come to you, I just pray that it will be a blessing to your heart. But again, tell me what you think. And let's pray together now as we have now studied who Jesus is in relationship to the character Michael. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, I am so grateful that we had this time together. And as we study together, as we pray together, we pray continually that you'll be with us even throughout our day. 
wherever we're headed today. We pray that you'll be with us and put someone in our path that we can tell about this same Jesus, who is Michael, the archangel, that will reach into the grave and raise the dead. We trust you and thank you. So please give us this opportunity and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Have a good day.